Okay, right. Everything should be underway, it seems. Okay. So, day four. Hmm. Not so long. Only a week to go before the exam. I noticed there are some repeat offenders in the group posting some of their letters again and again. I'm trying to do new people, but all I could find this morning... Uh, so, there's eight letters these are the ones that i took out of the group if your letter's not uh, here that's not my that's not my problem whatever i see in the group that's what i copy and paste into the document so let's have a look alex okay i'm writing to request urgent admission for mm, it's usually urgent admission so you know, it's usually the urgent admission of so you could put uh, an urgent admission for, but I think it's better to just say the urgent admission of Mr. Cochrane to the cardiology unit. And cardiology unit should probably be capitalized for stabilization as his signs and symptoms are suggested of less ventricular failure. Okay. Today, Mr. Cochrane presented to the clinic with severe shortness of breath, chest pain and sweating, examination, and HGVP, in addition to his epic speech, uh, crap, so his vital signs were normal. Quite a lot of stuff there. Okay. Um, now, I'm curious, what is going on here? So, today, Mr. Cochran presented, and you found this, and what? And what? You haven't told me anything. So he came to the clinic today, you found this, and what? Okay, and then what do we have here? Mr. Cochrane initially presented with similar symptoms. He also reported about. Why would you report about? You simply report. He also reported a worsening of cough. Uh, well, how can... Right, if he's presenting for the first time, right, wouldn't he say, I have a cough? And then if he came again, he would um, report a worsening of cough, of his cough, yeah? So isn't that what you would expect? So he also reported, now, so again, similar symptoms, uh, he also reported a worsening of cough. So I was, you see, it's like the reader, examiner, me, were confused immediately. We've no idea what the correct uh, uh, a chronology is here. Okay, I shall have a night and we'll lie down respectfully. Apart from advising to cease, from advising him to stop smoking, you don't say cease, Stop smoking and drinking. Um, but who said that he smoked or drank? So you're dropping in new information that you haven't previously mentioned. With no, you know, so it's like, no wonder the reader, me, the examiner, is uh, confused. You've dropped in something. We didn't know that he was smoking and drinking. So you would have to tell us that he was doing it first before then drawing some kind of, uh, of correlation. Okay, so, so, so signs of infection. Uh, fun review a week later was continued, was. Should that be were? Was his ankle edema? Just not, although he reported feeling better and had decreased smoking and drinking. Oh, Mr. Cocker and Pius. Right, well, um, if I were the reader receiving this, I wouldn't know what to make of it. So the introductions are good. Okay, there's this guy, Mr. Cochran. You want me to take him into card cardiology. Okay, right, because you think he's got left ventricular a failure. So um, today... He came to the clinic, blah, 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 blah. Then you go back to the 12th of August, when a week later. So I think, wouldn't it have made sense, really, to lay this out in a, a chronology, give, sign, give some kind of history, so I can see where it is coming from? You know, it's like, okay, 
a today, then back, back, back. You haven't mentioned any history. He's smoking and drinking. You never mentioned this before. So I think you need to work on the chronology here because simply reading this now without the case notes, and don't forget the reader does not have the case notes in front of him. Well, they'll have something, but they will read this first. So this has got to make sense. So the reader reading this thinks, oh, so it's not very, uh, very clear. Let's take a look at this next one. Uh, so I am writing to request further support and management. It's been recording. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, that is good. Your reason for writing is, is clear. The reader knows exactly what you want, Mr. Chin. Uh, you want him, he, he's being discharged. You want me to support him and manage him, and then you'll tell me why. Because I'm a physiotherapist. Okay. He has a history of right. He has, well, how can he say he has a history? I mean, it's a single event. So it's not really a history, is it? A history implies more than one. Um, so you would probably say like, uh, he had a right total knee replacement surgery in 2015. I don't know. Since then he has been experiencing pain, but you know, okay. That would have made uh, a bit more sense. Uh, I've done the first, Mr. Jim was admitted to hospital post knee surgery. He was complained. Hey, eh? why is that passive? He now, it could be he was complaining or he complained, but you can't have was and uh, um, and simple past, verb two. You know, it's either he was complaining, present participle, or he complained. Can't have both. Uh, he was, so let's, he complained of, of difficulty in performing his daily activities and an impaired, well, you don't have an article and impaired mobility during examination moderate swing inflammation was noticed well there's two things there well this swing inflammation was isn't that two things shouldn't it be were and noticed you mean you uh you found i mean you notice something it's kind of casual i notice uh that you have a new hairstyle today that's not the same thing is it Okay, his bullet examination with the president and his dad's osteoarthritis. Why are there two separate sentences? You could have made this a single sentence. And this is right knee and his blood revealed, blah, blah, blah. Okay. During hospitalization, Mr. Jean's knee swing was managed with ice packs. Until its sight has healed. Um, why, would, why are you using present perfect? Why would you use that? Uh, we know the time, hospitalization. So we don't use present perfect because it's not connecting present and past. Nice person here. He's able to walk a short distance. Right. Either it's he's able to walk a short distance or he's able to walk short distances. Uh, and his daily activities was observed. What? Activities, isn't that plural? So it, it should be were. And what does that mean? His daily activities were observed, observed by whom? Who observed him? And what did they observe? That doesn't make uh, any sense at all. Minimal assistance was provided to perform his lower body part to perform. His lower body parts, I'm not sure what that means either. Not very clear. Well, how condition has improved. We appreciate it. If you could provide the note. Uh, well, you've told me he's got a front wheel walker. What? So you mean, do you want me to provide him one? Or I should note that he has one, but you've already told me that he has got one. Okay, okay. So hmm, this, this could do with a bit of uh, elaboration, shall we say. We need more information here. Uh, okay. So, oh, yes, yeah, and don't forget, subject, um, verb, were, was. 
and you've got a couple of verb forms there that need a bit of attention. So watch your grammar. Sunday, okay. Thank you for seeing this patient. Who? Username. Now, right, you don't need that period. You don't put it if it's Mr. Mrs. etc. Only if it's captain or superintendent or something, right? So you don't need that. I would put her name here. Who is presenting with signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism, most likely growth disease. Now, cliche sentence, don't use it. Everybody does, and it's a waste of time. Your assessment and management would be greatly appreciated. Thank you for seeing. Why don't you simply tell me, the reader, what you want? I'm writing to request your assessment and management of blah, blah, blah. That's better. I know greatly appreciated. The reader is not doing, is not doing you a personal favor. We're not lending you money. It's not, so there's nothing to greatly appreciate. And appreciated by whom? You, the, by the patient, simply say, I want you to do this, 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 this. Right, this is a genitive case. So, Duval's medical history. She has been suffering with antisomnia. She's in the best not mother's from depression. Why should I note this? Why should I note this? Why? Hmm, okay. Initially, Mr. Val presented with symptoms of transplant sweating 18 times. We reported uh, unexplained weight loss or an unexplained weight loss despite having good, a good appetite. Examination of thyroid glands, with both hands were observed, or sort of eye test. Therefore, a blood test, or blood, it's either blood tests, a blood test, uh, a blood test, a thyroid function test, and ECG were ordered, and an. Articles, articles, you're supposed to make complete sentences. That's what you're supposed to do, complete grammatical sentences. Well, today's review at ECG showed no abnormality. Okay, however, blah, blah, blah. The patient's wise, it genitive, possessive. The patient, the patient's what? It, you only use that if it's a possessive form. Question early review, Mr. Val, blah, 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 blah. Okay, okay. Articles, watch your articles and watch your possessive or genitive uh, case. And what does this have to do with anything? And don't use this cliche sentence, please. You're not doing yourself any favors. Right. Susan, Mr. Riddle. Well, I can count. So we don't really need that. Does it matter if he's a student? No. Unless it's directly relevant, not really. Uh, who was, was experiencing also some noise coming from the microphones? Why isn't this working? Mm, mute all. All right. Was experiencing exacerbation of asthma or his uh, asthma. For testing or identification as possible, allergies. Okay. Mr. Riddle's medical history, non significant, apart from childhood asthma. However, he has not experienced it for years, as a period of asthma. Uh, why we got three sentences here? You could put this into one, or possibly two. Please note Mr. Riddle's grandfather was asthmatic. Why should we note this? We should note this because why? I don't know why. I don't know. You tell me. Don't inter don't put things into your uh, letter that you're not drawing some inference from. You know, please note his grandfather was asthmatic. Please note it is worth it is noteworthy that unless you're going to do something with that information, unless it's going to lead to something later on in the letter, don't include it. It's pointless. Okay, earlier this month, Mr. Riddle presented with a two weeks history or two week history of breathless scuffing, uh, wheezing, and wheezing. If it's the last in the list, put and itchy eyes. Chest x ray was normal, hence, asthma diagnosis was established. 
what and why hence who uses hence hence i die hmm right so who diagnosed him was it you then why is it passive i you know i that which led me to believe he had asthma or which you know so you put it uh later uh me to the diagnosis of asthma you did it make it active if you didn't do it make it passive okay hence as well as almost is what is that supposed to be a, a complete sentence is that supposed to be a complete sentence no it's almost like a note form you're not supposed you're supposed to make complete sentences right every letter task says make complete sentences so no short sentences okay two weeks later mr riddle experienced an attack of asthma i try and spell it right again however this time with eczema flare he was tachycardic hypertensive diminished entry when the was short what why do you keep short sentences short sentences his 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 you could put all this into one one sentence maybe two there's no need to be short sentences you're supposed to make complete complex sentences if you want to get a well be a short sentences don't don't work environmental triggers were discussed again why is it passive didn't you didn't you do this so why is it passive we just uh, i discussed with Mr. Riddle, the importance of or triggers and blah, 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 et cetera. Uh, okay, so I won't be able to use that. You know, you don't usually start a, a sentence with um, a noun phrase. That doesn't really work. You would only do that if you were writing like a CV, which this is not. Nominalization. I wouldn't uh, do it. Highly recommended. Now, I'm sure it is, but what does, who are you recommending uh, the reader to? You know, the way this reads, so you've got some passive voice here. Instead of saying, uh, I discussed with Mr. Riddle, blah, 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 and I would like you to do blah, blah, blah. Instead of doing it like that, so it's clear, simple, the reader knows what you're talking about. Highly recommended to whom or by whom. What does that mean? What you mean is requested? That's better, but highly recommended, no. So that sentence does not work. Okay, so got to be careful. You've got to be clear. Don't write short sentences. Don't overuse passive. If you did it, you did it. Make it active. Okay. So what have we got now? A writer invention, the above, the above mentioned patient. What, wouldn't it be easier to just use the patient's name instead of writing out above mentioned patient, the above mentioned patient? That's what, wouldn't, that's like four words when you could simply say, Miss Hall, who oh, signs and symptoms are suggestive of blah, 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 blah. Okay, I would be grateful if you could do, right now, this is clear. So it's, I'm writing in reference to, I would be grateful if you could do. Okay, uh, for investigation appropriate, that would be a definitive diagnosis. You could have put this into a single sentence mind. You could have done, put it into a single sentence. I'm writing to request an endoscopy and further investigation of Miss Hall, whose signs and symptoms are blah, blah, blah. You could have done that, a single sentence. That would have been shorter, more concise and to the point. Now, just to give you an overview, is that proper academic language? Just to give you an overview, why not simply say, regarding her medical history, it all has a history of various medical illnesses, which include asthma, chicken pox, hepatitis. Right, right. 
do any or all of these have to anything to do with a situation? Now, some of them do, but I'm sure that some of them don't. So she's got reflux. So dermatitis, no. Dyspepsia, maybe. Measles, chicken pox, depression. Uh, this is quite a list. We don't, we don't really need all this stuff, right? We just don't need it. I'm sure that not all of this is pertinent. Histamine of tonsillectomy. Well, yeah, yeah, that's going to... Nah, right, so you've added a lot of stuff here that you just do not need. It's taking up time. You're writing this down, right? 225 words, that's not bad, but you're taking up time in you know, writing all this out that you don't need to do so. Okay. Uh, regarding... She's a divorced teacher with two children. I don't want to be rude, but so what? Who, what does that have to do with what you're asking me to do? Nothing. Ex-smoker. Now, that could be pertinent, all right? And the spirit drinker. Okay. Her mother has a history of asthma, peptic ulcer, so maybe, maybe. But, okay. Today, family history of UIT, though, infection, Miss Hall, and you don't need that period. Presented complaining of dysphagia to solids. This is that Miss Hall lost to, had, has lost to kilograms. Went to a bet. So, we've got all this, right, we've got all this, this background. And the actual paragraph of the visit is two sentences how how is that working yeah so you've got two sentences about the important visit and you've got all this other crap about in the past that possibly is pertinent but probably not so I think uh, you need to be a bit more more circumspect about the information which you select, I think. Okay, you know, signs and symptoms, blah, 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 blah. Okay, okay. All right, Zeneb. Mm -mm 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 -mm. After, I don't know if this is supposed to be suspicion. Maybe. So, suspicion. Okay. So oh, that's good. I'm writing to update you. Okay. Miss Garcia was admitted after she, she had complained oh, and passed, passed perfect of headache, joint stiffness, bruises, and photophobia. Her examination with the next stiffness well as a particular. Uh, so why do you have extra verbs? So you've got her examination re revealed as well as particular rash was observed. Why have you got these like two verbs? Yeah, so you've got like an active verb and a passive verb. So why don't you just say her examination revealed neck uh, a stiffness and a particular rash over her abdomen and legs? Isn't that more concise? However, she was a fibro. They've done both tests along with uh, a lumbar puncture. Okay, Mister Miss mm. Garcia's investigations investigation right is Miss Garcia a private detective? No, then she didn't investigate anything. So Miss Garcia's uh, test results showed features of bacterial meningitis, and we don't need to illustrate you're not writing an essay you're not giving example simply say what it showed uh, the blood test revealed an increase in white blood cell count CRP in addition to that predominance was detected so so again why do you have showed and then you've got a passive why don't you just put all this in a single sentence Miss Garcia's uh, test results showed features of bacterial men, angitis, which included 
blood test, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Keep it, you know, short, simple, and concise. During hospitalization, impaired antibiotics, and uh, consequently, uh, until so, so, there's consequently, poss possibly, subsequently, meaning afterwards, uh, consequently means a direct result of. She was discharged after marked improvement, after showing a marked improvement. The Department of Human Services was notified and she was advised, well, shall we make it passive? Yeah, because to make it parallel, a structure, yeah? She was discharged, she was given advice. Make it parallel, use parallel structure. Okay, saying advice was given. Okay. In view above, I recommend every family member, in addition, seek medical providers if your symptoms develop, because it's not happened yet, so you can't use past tense. Okay, okay, okay. So not too bad. You just got to watch, you know, mixing active and passive, because sometimes it doesn't make uh, sense, but that's not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. What else have we got? So I've got a couple left, and then I'll open for questions. There's only only three people here. <laughs> But uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, I shall be happy to answer them. Mr. Collister, referred to assessment and management. Okay, it's good. Presented to the clinic with a complaint of tiredness and the couch blood. On account of which? Mm, with a complaint of tiredness. So I ordered blood tests. Okay, okay. Translated. So the complaint. Reduced vision. This is an ongoing fatigue. Okay, okay, in addition to this, uh, why in addition, in addition to what? So I wouldn't do that. So I would, you know, if this is supposed to like a history regarding his history, blah, 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 you could have put the history uh, as paragraph two uh, instead of putting it right down here at the end. Overweight individual as evident by his recent BMI. Uh, was 30 a few months ago in which she was advised to us. So, hmm, hmm, I would have ordered this in a slightly different uh, way. There's, uh, you could have presented the information in a, a different way and it would have filled out the story, you know. So I would have put the history first. Uh, I remember the case notes for this one. I think he came several times and he was like, on first occasion, he was, so he was like, it showed a gradual increase in tiredness, in symptoms, he was busy at work, stress, and all this, you know? So it's like, if you look at the case notes, it builds up a picture. This started happening, then this happened, and it got worse, and then he came back, and this showed him that, which leads me to make the request of writing, which is, I want you to do, etc. Now, you know, you are essentially, you're telling a story, you're creating... A narrative. Okay, I want you to do X, Y, Z. The reason I want you to do this is because this happened and this happened and this happened. And if we take all these things into account of a narrative, this is why I want you to do X, Y, Z. So that's what you've got to think about. Okay. So it's not bad, but you could have filled the story out. You know, I remember this because I've seen this case notes quite a few times. And it, if you look at it, it builds up. It was tired, his eyes, tired, stressed, tired eyes, which leads up to blah, 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 blah. Okay? So that's what I would uh, do there. But in terms of English, that's quite, uh, that's quite good. Urgent admission of Miss Olson's experiencing consistent chest pain and high blood pressure. Medical history, she has had hypothyroidism. 97, hypertension, 23. She takes very much care besides this. Okay, there's been experience injection, shoulder pain for a week, uh, which normally was which normally was resolved after taking Milanta to Panadol. This morning she appears very tired and generally weak. Put a comma. Well, access. Mm. Sorry. 
assessing or taking, but it's not accessing. That means something else. A BP 180 over 95. Thus she was taken to a bed for some rest. The GP was informed, but it says we'll visit uh, her tomorrow. Miss Olson, Mrs. Olson refused to image nausea, she was difficult sleeping and sleeping and had pain in the shoulder and neck or in her shoulder and neck in either an article or a pronoun. She was confined to bed after checking uh, her BP. Uh, so now this does this is what you call a dangling participle, because who checked it? She was confined to bed after checking BP, after I checked her BP. Providing night medication while well, rechecking the right to the disruption, and she complained of, this must be a typo, I presume, uh, consistent chest pain, therefore she was transferred to your facility. Okay, I appreciate urgent evaluation, the mention of management of the above mentioned patient. Why not use a name? Okay, okay, 249 words. That's a little bit long, 249. Mm, a little bit long. Okay, okay, right, right. I've got about eight minutes. Eight minutes. So, anybody got any questions? Let's get on with it. There's only three of, of you. I'll turn your microphone on. Uh, let me unmute your mic. Okay, why is this not working? I can't. Mm, I can't unmute your microphone. There's something wrong there. Uh, no. Okay. To answer your question, what do you recommend to write in passive form or active? It depends. If you did it, if you know who performed the action, then it's active. If you're a doctor in a hospital and somebody else performed some action, like admitting a patient or dressing wounds and it's passive because you don't know or it's not important you also use a passive when you want to put the uh, important information the subject at the beginning of a sentence we know object and subject yeah. so uh, if you want to put the patient at the beginning because that's the important uh, information then you can use impassive so, you know, it depends. I mean, the examiners want you to use a mixture of structure in any case. But if you performed an action, there's no need for you to use a passive form. I prescribed, I advised, etc. Okay. Any more questions? Come on, we've only got about five minutes before this runs out. Six minutes left. Ooh. Only three of you. So have you got any questions? If you have, now's the time, six minutes left. You know, there's only Hope, Wala and Sachin here. So I can turn your microphone on or you can type it. No, well, if nobody's got any questions then uh, I shall end it uh, here. So I'm gonna put this on YouTube. You can uh, watch it. A bit later it'll take a, a while it's got to to process what's wrong with writing as a family history of asthma well unless you're going to do something with the information there's no point in including it some things are relevant some things are not you have to make a decision if it's important if it's relevant if it's not relevant you don't include it what's the main issue what's the secondary issue some things are pertinent some things are not you have to make a decision okay and every letter needs to be treated on its own there's no standardized letters now on purpose because they know that people are using memorized phrases and templates and they don't like it that's why every letter needs to be treated as completely new and different okay so I'll put this on YouTube then 
Uh, it should be available in a bit because it's got to process and upload first. So I'll be in Telegram and uh, I'll see you there.